Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Victorinux Huntsman, so stay tuned. So I came across this at Target for $33. Yeah, I think it was about $33. Uh, online prices centered around $35, and that's the one that comes with this pouch or this sheath and we'll take a close look at it in a moment um, what really attracted me to this specific swiss army knife is that it's the um, smallest one that you could get to that has both the scissors and the saw and i like having those two tools on me all the time so this is a uh, four layer design it has four layers of, of tools in there has 13 tools and it's very highly rated it's one of the most highly rated uh swiss army knives out there um you know i know a lot of people like the swiss champ but for a lot of people that's getting kind of thick and i think really going anything more than the four layers which is about five eighths of an inch thick is, is more uh, the People don't want to go much more than that, and this is uh, three and a half inches long. So let's go ahead and take a, a close look and see what we get. This is what came in the packaging. You get a sheath. It says it's leather. Um, it feels kind of thin for leather, but um, it says it's leather. The uh, snap is a, a button. The snap is a button. It's not Velcro, in other words, which I do like. And I actually had a comment in my last video that said, oh, well, a button's so much quieter than Velcro because I, I despise Velcro because it makes noise. Well, you can carefully, carefully open that up with a lot less noise than um, Velcro, as you can see there. You can carefully which is a lot quieter than velcro anyway the the sheath is made in china and um you get a nice belt clip i like these kind a lot better in that you don't have to take your belt off in order to get the belt through it you could just clip it on just like that really nice as a matter of fact let's go ahead and see what this looks like when you put it inside make sure that we don't have any kind of weird fitting problems and it fits nice and tight, just like that. Anyway, I did say that this has 13 tools. Now, a lot of you might say, oh, you made a mistake. It says 15 functions. Yes, 15 functions and 13 tools. That means that some of the individual tools in here have more than one function. So I did not make an error. <laughs> now, Victory Dux has been around for a long, long time. Uh, according to the back of the package, it's 1891, and it's one of the two famous, finger quotes, um, Swiss Army knives from Switzerland. Here's the other one, which is Wanger, and the one thing that makes a big, you know, that you could see a difference in is the shield. That's what the Wanger shield looks like. That's what Victory Nux. You're not going to see this on knives much longer. Uh, Victory Nux bought Wanger a couple years ago, and now they're phasing out um the wanger knife division sort of incorporating it into the victory nux because it's kind of redundant and in this day and age we need to save money every which way we can so let's go ahead and go over the tools the most important tool of course is the knife which is your typical spear point knife that you get now i do have a note here about blade steel because a lot of people don't know what the blade steel used in these swiss army knives is and what what uh, i had finally found out after much searching the internet is that it's x55 cr m014 and it has a hrc uh, a rockwell hardness of 56 so you know, how does that steel compare to others? Well, it's somewhere in between 420 and 440A. So, you know, it, it's on the medium of the hardness scale. You don't want to get too hard with a blade this thin because as you get harder, which improves the edge retention, it also gets more brittle. And when you have something this thin, you're going to end up breaking it really quick. So I think it's a good balance. It has pretty good corrosion resistance. There's a lot of 
um, videos and information out there on how well these really do as far as uh, resisting corrosion. So I think it's a good balance and, a, a, you know, to keep the price down, you got a lot of steels in here. Um, and you're getting all of this relatively cheap. Uh, I think as far as cost and performance, it's really a good deal. The steel is soft enough where you can uh, put a really good edge on it really quick. And it, and it holds up pretty pretty decent. So that's all I got to say about that. Um, the only other thing is, I, I don't remember off the top of my head the, the blade size here. So let me go from the usable part of the blade. It looks like about two and a half inches right there. As far as us usable, if you want to measure the shoulder, it gets to about two or three quarters. So what else do we get? I'm going to go ahead and put this in. You get a smaller blade right there. Now the other materials, um, it, it, the other tools in here will be different metals, of course. And you'll have... Uh, most of these other ones are X39CR13, which go from an HRC of 52 to 56. And then the springs in here are X20CR13, which is a 49 HRC. Um, one, one thing to note is that, you know, you do have springs back here, so these are all slip joint. Nothing locks on this particular model. Okay, so next is the corkscrew. Now, this is the tool that I think is the most useless personally. There's uh, not too, you know, unless you're drinking all kinds of wines out there while you're hunting, since this is the function is hun hunting. But, you know, it, it's EDC also. But uh, unless you drink wine with, with the corks, which a lot of people would consider fancy wine, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, this is so specialized that you're probably not going to use it too much. They do sell a little, uh, screwdriver set, the type that you would use, like, for your glasses to tighten them up, um, that sort of screws into this corkscrew, so it gives it a purpose to hold that, which is pretty neat. Now, another thing that's hidden way down in here, I might have to put my autofocus on, let me, uh, go ahead and do that. There we go, and there is a hole right down in here, as you can see. That hole, you could put a straight pin in there. You stick the straight pin in there, and then close this up, and that'll hold it in. That's one of the little secrets. I'll just let you in on a, a huge secret <laughs> on these, these guys here. Okay, next is the can opener. Let me see if I can find that. This is going to be a long video. So if you don't like long videos, I understand. All right, here is the can opener. Now, this is the first tool that is a multifunction tool because you have the can opener, and you can see the blade is on the front. So as you go, you're going to move forward, not back, because there are different types. And on the end, you have a flathead screwdriver. So you have two tools in one right there. And this can also be used uh, for some Phillips screws, by the way. If you notice one thing about the, these Swiss Army knives is that everything is very shiny. That's one of the things, one of the, uh, in the metallurgy, I think they leave in a little extra sulfur, which helps, uh, you know, it, it enhances the ability to polish very nicely, I believe. I'm not a metallurgist, whatever you want to call it. Next is your bottle opener. Bottle opener, bottle opener. Wow, I'm getting lucky. I'm pulling out the right ones every time. So here's your bottle opener, and I think this is also sort of has multiple functions, because besides opening your bottle tops, you have a larger flathead screwdriver, and I think this little nick here is, uh, can be used as a wire stripper, I believe. Yeah, so you can just go ahead and get your wire in there and strip the uh, noodle off the wire. Next is the reamer. The reamer is found on the bottom. Let's see if we can go ahead and find that. There we go. Here's your reamer. And the reamer, has, it's sort of a little sharp here. It's kind of pointy here. And you have a hole here so you could use it, you know, to pull thread through holes. Like if you're threading some, you know, putting thread through leather or something like that. That's what that could be used for. 
next thing that they're counting as a tool, which I, I always find hilarious, is this key ring right there. For Swiss Army knives that I usually carry, I usually take this off. But um, you can, you know, put some 550 cord on there and make it easier to pull out of your pocket. So there, there's a good purpose for that. Next is tweezers. You have tweezers right here. And they're, they are really nice tweezers. And on the other side, you have a toothpick right there. I don't use, I don't like using a toothpick, sticking this in my mouth and then putting it back in my Swiss Army knife personally. But what it is good for is, you know, once this is in your pocket for a couple of weeks and you get a lot of lint and all kinds of other crap inside your Swiss Army knife, um, this is kind of good to get the dust and, and dirt and lint and everything out. So that, that's a really good thing to have, good purpose, because if you notice, no flow flu, no flow flu, no flow through design here. Everything is closed on the back, so everything will just end up getting stuck in there. All right, next thing you get is scissors. But I, I love having scissors in my Swiss Army tool right there. And these scissors are very good. We could go ahead and do a, a quick test if you like. Just come over here and you can see it does a very good job cutting paper. Oh, you could also cut your nails, things like that. Unless you bite your nails, then you don't need to worry about cutting your nails with scissors. Next thing is the saw. And again, I pointed out that this is the smallest tool that you could get that has both the saw and the um, screwdriver, I believe. I believe. I mean, uh, the saw and the scissors. Really nice saw, as a matter of fact. Really good aggressive teeth there. It uh, definitely pulls, you can see. And uh, I've tried this out on some twigs and... and what not and it does a very good job and the last thing which is a, another tool which is borderline useless most people don't even know what it's for they, they usually get it wrong in the reviews and that's this hook right here and that's called a parcel hook so what you could do is you know if you have some let's say you're walking out of Walmart because a lot of some of us a lot of us <laughs> go to Walmart for all crap and you had those plastic bags where well, you could hook a couple of those and then sort of carry it like this along just like that and that's a parcel hook i'm sure there are other things you could use it for i watched one video now this is out of the box creative thinking you could use it to help display <laughs> your knife just like that that's funny so if you want to display your knife it's sort of like a kickstand that that's out of the box thinking right there so see and this is why I don't like this key ring and I usually take them off so um, I love this knife for just about everything there's not too many things I don't like the amount of tools you get for the the thickness is amazing you know here is a, a knife that I reviewed a while back and which I absolutely love and it's the electrician's knife and you can see you only get like two tools in this thing and uh, you can see the difference in thickness there. Let's bring in the um, U.S. utility knife there that's been made for years, also called the camping knife. And you can see you only get uh, two layers of tools in here. And But you can see thickness-wise it's uh, not making as efficient use of space as the Swiss Army knife. So there you go. What do I not like about the Swiss Army knives? These scales right here, which are iconic. I mean, when you see this, you think Swiss Army knife. Unfortunately, <clears throat> these uh, scales are, are nice and shiny and pretty, but they also scratch. The plastic is relatively soft, and if you have anything else in your pocket, they will get scratched up rather quickly. So you're not going to keep it pretty. However, you can actually uh, pull these scales off and replace them if you'd like. And uh, there are some Swiss Army knives that do have a, a metal type scale, similar, similar in looks to this. 
and uh, I would love it if they had the the Huntsman with those aluminum scales. Uh, that that would be the perfect tool, and they could do away with the um, corkscrew, and I would be in absolute heaven. So there is the close look at the Victorinux Huntsman. I'm gonna give the Victorinux huntsman a nine out of ten it is a awesome buy you can't go wrong uh all the reviews out there on the interwebs is five stars so the the only reason why it doesn't get a 10 out of 10 for me i did say nine out of ten yeah the only reason why it doesn't get a 10 out of 10 is because the scales scratch easily so either make it something that doesn't scratch as easily and um really that's it the the only thing that I sort of feel like I, I, you know, wanting more out of this is to maybe somehow squeeze pliers in here. But it's kind of hard with everything else that it has. If you do want something that has this plus pliers, you either got to carry a separate small little tool or you have to move up to something a little thicker, a little bigger, a little more expensive like the Swiss Champ. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you, and I hope you have a great evening. Take care. Bye.